So, I told ChatGPT to give me a definition for a character arc, and what I got was the transformation or growth of a character as they face challenges, make choices, and learn important lessons that change them along the way. The AI was then kind enough to list all the stages in a character arc, the gist of it being that first, we establish the traits that will change, then we expose the character to challenges that cause this inner transformation. Think Iron Man 1, where Tony learns firsthand how the weapons he creates are being used, and then changes his ways. Or Black Panther, where Killmonger forces T'Challa to confront the more negative consequences of Wakanda's isolationism, which he then reverses. But what about Quantumania? Do we get something like this? Mm. Look, I should probably say that even though I'm about to spend the whole of this video criticizing this movie, I actually had a lot of fun with it, and I strongly disagree with these awful reveals it's been getting. I'd definitely rank it above Love and Thunder, very likely above Multiverse of Madness, and hell, I had more fun with it than with Wakanda Forever, even if I don't quite think it's the better movie. And some of the things I've heard said? Like, some people are saying Ant-Man's witty charm was overwhelmed by Kang's more serious menacing tone. But dude, are we even talking about the same movie here? Full spoiler alert for the next sentence and for the rest of the video, but Kang's literally defeated by an army of laser ants. I'll say it again, an army of laser ants. So, no, Kang's clearly the one who got the short end of the stick in this Clash of Tones. And I honestly can't see myself taking him anywhere as seriously as I did Thanos once we get to the next Avengers movie. But enough with the disclaimers. Let's get to it. So, as ChatGPT so kindly told us, the first step in a character arc is to establish whatever trait it is that will undergo a transformation. And in that respect, Quantumania actually starts off pretty promising. We are immediately shown Scott reading the ending of his book, where he says his focus right now is being a dad, not a hero. And right after, we find out his daughter Cassie has become something of an activist who disapproves of his current non-intervening, non-heroic stance. And on top of that, we also learn he is acting like this because of the guilt and pain he feels for having lost years of Cassie's life after his role as Ant-Man left him stranded in the Quantum Realm. That's a pretty solid basis for a strong character arc, right? We have the trait to be transformed, and we have a strong, relatable, emotional basis for why this trait took hold, since the reason why he even became Ant-Man back in the first movie was to get enough money for child support so he could maintain his relationship with Cassie. Of course he's traumatized by all these years he lost. We get it. So, awesome, right? Well, not quite. You see, this is where we should be moving on to the second step, which consists of putting Scott in a situation that challenges him, that challenges his flaw, forces him to adapt, to evolve, to overcome this trait. In other words, to grow. What do we get, though? The first relevant scene comes when Kang's soldiers first attack the rebel camp, and Scott's first reaction is to take his daughter and hide, saying there's nothing they can do, that it's not their fight, even as she urges him to help. Now, that would be a perfect example of the flaw he needs to overcome, except he then decides he is actually going to help. But when he moves to tell Cassie to hide and wait for him, he finds she's already stepped into the fray. So, does he have a flaw to be overcome or not? Because in this scene, it's not that he's refusing the hero's call to action. It's just that there was a slight delay in his compliance, which are two very different things. Why not have him completely turn his back on the rebels, and have this create a rift in his relationship with Cassie, and then have this rift be resolved once he actually overcomes his flaw by choosing to help? 
ideally at the climax. They probably didn't want to make Scott unlikable, but the simple fact is, perfect characters have no room to grow. And what happens then? Well, they both get defeated by Modok and taken to Kang, who forces Scott to help him by threatening to hurt Cassie. So in the rebel camp scene, Scott only hesitates slightly before deciding to help the rebels, which puts into question whether he actually has a flaw to overcome, and here that flaw is irrelevant, since he's intervening only to save his daughter. I mean, yeah, you could make a case that his choice to help Kang is a demonstration of his flaw, showing us he's willing to prioritize the safety of his daughter even if it means freeing a genocidal monster, but the movie never portrays this as a negative. In fact, they don't even give Scott an actual chance to make a final decision on whether to go through with helping him, since Kang steals the core with his telekinesis before Scott can actually decide whether to give it to him. Even Cassie herself, for all her supposed altruistic activism, doesn't seem too conflicted about her father's choice, and indeed, once they storm the tower and she manages to send a hologram message out, she says she learned to stand up for others from her dad. And then they sell that as a big payoff when Scott comes in giant-sized, charging through the walls of Kang City, as if this were the completion of his arc, a true hero coming to stand up for the little guy and save the revolution or something. But that's not what's going on, right? He's actually a dad coming to save his daughter. He literally calls out Kang and yells, we had a deal, you took my daughter, before breaching the wall. The rebels are more like convenient allies than people he's actually trying to save. And look, I'm not saying Scott wouldn't have showed up if not for his daughter. Maybe he would have, just like he had decided to aid the rebels back in the camp. But that's what makes this movie so weird. That's why I titled this video after a missing arc. They clearly set up his reluctance to get involved and take risks to help others as the flaw he has to overcome. But every single time a situation comes up where he gets a chance to confront this flaw, his daughter gets caught up in the danger. So when he does decide to act, it's not that he's changed or learned. He's being a dad, not a hero. So there you go. The arc was set up, ripe for the taking, and then abandoned. And to be clear, I'm not saying a main character needs an arc for a movie to be good. A character with a flat arc, in other words, one that doesn't change, can be a perfect fit for a protagonist if, for instance, he refuses to change even when under extreme pressure from his circumstances. Instead, the fun lies in watching that character persevere and change the circumstances that try to break him. Think Hexaw Ridge, where Andrew Garfield plays a soldier who refuses to kill, but believes he can still do his duty by saving people in the battlefield. He's initially branded a coward, and is severely mistreated by all his peers, but through his perseverance, he wins them over one by one, so even though he doesn't change, their concept of bravery does. Or think Captain America in his first movie too. He always had the will of a hero, with his iconic, I can do this all day. The whole story is about how his will is so strong, that he gets chosen to take the serum in spite of being a weakling. And then, once the army wants to use him as mere propaganda, the strength of his conviction carries him to where the fight's at, inspiring those around him and leading them to victory. But those examples are fundamentally different from Quantum Mania, because they were trying to have flat arcs. Those characters are not presented to us as having a flaw to be overcome, whereas here, even at the end when Scott is fighting Kang fist to fist, Kang says stuff like, you should have looked the other way, or you could have gone home, you could have seen your daughter again. But that's a lie. Scott never got the chance to choose not to give Kang the reactor. 
it was Kang who chose to betray him by keeping Cassie. So when he tells Scott he could have gone back home with his daughter, it seems like the movie thinks Scott overcame his flaw, that he willingly endangered the well-being of his family in order to help those in need. But as we saw, Scott never did that. The movie never let him. So, yeah. Regardless of everything I just said, I did have a lot of fun with this movie. I assure you Paul Rudd remains as likable and ageless as always. So if you like that kind of stuff, I definitely recommend you go check it out. I also recommend a bit shamelessly perhaps that you like this video and subscribe to this channel. I've only began doing this last week, but I'll be posting videos on storytelling and geek culture every Friday. So if that's your turf, you know what to do. I'm Pedro Perizotto from Geek Zoto. Be a good geek, and I'll see you next time.